Uh, so then I would like to welcome everybody to this uh, webinar today. We have a special webinar. It's a webinar that is dedicated uh, to the award ceremony. We had uh, two uh, competitions that we are running. Uh, the one was EO for SDG, which is, uh, stands for Earth Observation for Sustainable Development Goals, uh, mini projects. Uh, and the second was Earth at Risk Image Contest. And uh, for these two, we have today the winning teams here and the winning teams will present their uh, results. And we would like also to con congratulate the winning teams uh, for their uh, prizes and awards. Uh, I just start then uh, with the first one, um, which is um, the competition uh, of um, EO for SDG. Uh, this has been organized by REACT, uh, the technical committee of IEEE GRSS, and REACT stands for Remote Sensing uh, Environment Analysis and Climate Technology. So we are a group of uh, people which are working in the application domain and, and are using remote sensing as a tool uh, to solve open questions uh, which are dealing with en environmental issues, but also with climate change issues. Um, the, the idea of this uh, mini project uh, competition, uh, this time already the second time we are proceeding with it. Um, the main goal here is to sketch small science projects using remote sensing. Um, and this main idea behind is to motivate local students to work scientifically together, make aware of particular regional problems that may occur. And the main outcome at the end um, of this competition is that the winning team uh, gets, in principle, a column in the IEEE GRSS magazine. So we were publishing, we will publish there in the next version of the magazine, the winning team and the results of the mini project, and also they are getting uh, a small financial support. I would like to explain a little bit uh, what REACT is dealing or what kind of focus a REACT has. This you can see here now on the slide. So we have in principle four focus, local focused areas. And the one is dealing uh, with all the issues related to the Pacific Islands. Uh, in terms of uh, flooding, but also disturbance of forest uh, and land. The other one is related to agriculture and food security. In the moment, it's very focused in India, but we have also a lot of issue around the world. Um, the next focus that we have is on flood um, and water security in Africa, and also here as an example in Africa, but also dealing with these topics around the world. And we have a kind of a cryospheric topic, which is here dealing very strongly on one particular area, which we call also the third pole, um, which is the Hindu Kush Karakoram Himalaya area. And uh, these are the main focused areas where we are, where we are in the moment working uh, together uh, with the leading persons of each of these focus areas. They are coordinating the activities in this region and uh, we, we have opened up, in principle, this mini project that people can associate themselves to one of these hot topics uh, that we have here in order to explain or present the results they have obtained uh, in this particular area of interest. And with this, I'm just coming now to the winning team uh, that we like to celebrate today. And the winning team um, is from the Department of Earth Science um, in Sus uh, Suspienza University di Roma in Rome. Uh, and these are two persons um, in the team, with, which is uh, Divesh Kumar Rana and Hani Datka. So these are the two persons and they have got the, the award uh, for their work uh, that is entitled as infrastructure monitoring using persistent scatter interferometric synthetic aperture radar PS INSAR, Technic for Ravenna City in Italy. Um, in this case, I would like really to congratulate the winning team for their first place uh, in this uh, EO for SDG mini project. Um, as the next, what we will hear now is um, I would like to hand over to the winning team. They will give a presentation about uh, their main uh, area of, um, of research uh, and, and also they will explain us 
what it is about uh, the topic that they are presenting here or where they got the winning prize for it. Um, so therefore I will just switch now over and would give the screen uh, to the first speaker, which is Hani, and then the second speaker, which is uh, um, Divish Kumar. Hello, everyone. Uh, I'm Hanya Dotra, uh, the second uh, year PhD student at Sapienza University of Rome and Arts Department, Earth Science Department. Uh, today, uh, I will present uh, our proposal uh, with the topic, uh, with the title of Infrastructure Monitoring Using Persistent Scatter intro Interferometric uh, Synthetic Aperture Radar, PSNSR Technique uh, in Ravenna City in Italy. That's our agenda. You can see uh, the whole story behind this uh, proposal uh, was uh, the, was related to uh, sustainability, uh, sustainable development goals. As all of us more or less are familiar with the sustainability, it uh, emphasized the integrated nature of human activities and uh, therefore the need for coordinated planning among different sector groups and uh, jurisdictions. Uh, that's, uh, as you can see, there is 17 different groups of uh, sustainable development goals. Uh, but our focus in this study was uh, goal number nine, uh, which uh, focused on building resilience infrastructure, uh, promote sustainable uh, industrial industrialization and foster innovation. And also goal number 11, uh, which is about making cities and human settlements inclusive, safe, resilient, and sustainable. Uh, based on statistics, 70% of people expected to live in cities by 2050. However, many of these cities are not ready for this uh, rapid urbanization. So uh, unless that the good progress has been made uh, since the implementation of uh, SGDs in 2050, and now the number of uh, countries with uh, national local disaster risk uh, reduction strategy has doubled, but uh, issues still remain. Many cities are also more vulnerable to climate changes and natural disaster. Uh, land subsidies, as in geohazard, uh, has uh, multiple impacts on natural, rural, and urban environment. Uh, actually, the loss of Land elevation can reduce the free board of uh, embankments and ports, increase the flood, flood frequency and marine uh, storms, uh, which is, has uh, severe damages to urban heritage, economic activities, and coastal morphologies. Uh, we did uh, this study on Ravenna City. Uh, why uh, did we choose this area? Because Ravenna is one of the oldest Italian towns a uh, town supposedly founded in the 18th uh, centuries and uh, located in on the coastal, coastland of the Po River Plain, a few kilometers far from the Adri Adriatic Sea and about 60 kilometers south of the Po River Delta. This city is one of the significant historical heritage. Actually, there's eight UNESCO World Heritage Sites, sites in this city and um, Rowana Port is the most important one of the Adriatic Sea for uh, mercantile traffic. Uh, this study area also is uh, known for as uh, density, densely urbanized and uh, has a, a high population density. As you can see in this uh, in this part, uh, the you can see the Porta Adriana, one of the historical center of Ravenna. This gate was built before 1080, and all you can see the Historical um, uh, investigation shows that there is uh, also subsidence from 1998 to 1990 uh, to 2020. Also, the map below shows that uh, uh, the subsidence uh, in this uh, port uh, measured by leveling uh, surveys. Uh, as we know that the geological setting has a crucial role in understanding the many uh, the alluvial deposit. Um, there's a different layer of, in this uh, part, there's a different layer of sediments on rock 
including clay sand and gravel. This um, subsurface geological formation contributes to the hydrological characteristic of the area and influence factors such as ground, groundwater flow. Uh, the area combined uh, the geological aspect of the area combined lithology, bedrock, and tectonic, which lithology include sequence of marine, uh, delta, uh, marsh and alluvial deposit. Also, bedrock uh, include complex fold structure and tectonic uh, characteristic of the area is uh, Adriatic, Adriatic fold with an axis parallel to the main Apennine structural lines. Uh, this uh, this map show the subsidence, uh, natural subsidence uh, in um, minus 1.4 millimeter per each year based on the local agency. Uh, Div gonna explain the rest of the power grid. Okay. Hello, am I audible? Yes, we can hear you well. Yeah. So, um, as Hania told about the ancient history of the Ravenna city and uh, like the importance as a heritage site. So it's important to like the monitor the subsidence in the from the ancient past history to uh, till now uh, with the help of the synthetic aperture radar technology. So our aim of this study is falls under the sustainable development goals number nine and 11 which mentioned by Hania and which is related to sustainable cities and the communities as well. So our aim of this study to monitor the infrastructures like the urban buildings, cultural heritage site, uh, linear infrastructure such as the bridges, railway, using the PS insert technique from Sentinel-1 C-band data sets uh, from 2018 to 22. And uh, to fulfill our aim, these are the, our objectives to assess the urban infrastructures using the uh, vectoral decomposition technique at a higher spatial resolutions as a up-down vector and east-west vector, and to assess the monitor the linear infrastructure such as the roads, bridges, uh, tunnels, dams, etc. And uh, for uh, our comprehensive methodology consists, uh, we uh, collect the data from the EGMS portal Sentinel-1C band, uh, which uh, comprises uh, three sets of data sets, uh, basics, calibrated and ortho. Generally basic data, it's a raw data, like process from the standard development process. The calibrated data contains the GNSS uh, uh, absolute uh, standard process data and ortho contains the up-down vector at a 100, 100 meter special resolution. But we want to uh, like process from the raw information because, because it contains all the useful information. So we collect the basic data and pers uh, persistence scatterer points in ascending and descending geometry. And uh, parallelly, we also collect the data vector data sets from the regional portal from the Emilia Romagna region and OpenStreetMap data. Then we pros push process all these data using the uh, vector uh, here post process the, all the point data using the vectoral decomposition technique and uh, linear infrastructure analysis and uh, all all these uh, uh, collecting these ps points we just money we just want to know the subsidence and deformation and uplift phenomena in our area of interest and uh, it includes the buildings the linear infrastructure culture, cultural heritage and the critical infrastructure and ultimately we also validate our results with the gnss station uh, with uh, nevada geodetic laboratory open source data sets and uh, this is the EGMS data, the theoretical background of this data. It's uh, Sentinel-1C band data, and it's a multi-temporal acquisitions. And we it, it, we just uh, like want to measure the changes in the phase, uh, uh, just due to the amplitude stability index and the spatial coherence. And uh, it gives the ground displacement uh, in the change in phase equivalent to the ground displacement in multi-temporal images. And uh, this is the uh, what EGMS is. The EGMS, the strength of the EGMS portal is open data for the European region. Broad coverage is a continuous monitoring and multi-temporal analysis that we can perform. Also, the integration with the other data sources is also possible. The weaknesses are well, in most of the region is a discontinuous coverage. Ortho product uh, spatial resolution is coarse, hundred meter spatial resolution. Measurement point positioning, like uh, it's a meter level ambiguity, also it's motion orientation. Also, is a standard development process. Maybe so application to application, it can vary. So the first uh, inferences of our analysis is the uh, this Ravenna city, as we as we can see in this image, it's ascending track one one seven, and here is the red uh, part depicts the subsidence phenomena, and 
the green uh, green uh, points is, so uh, depicts the stable phenomena and in the saffron and the yellow part it's majorly it uh, reveals the deformation phenomena ultimately but we have to like more look into the using the vectoral decomposition technique that i will gonna present in the next slide this is the first phenomenon as we can see here in the uh, near the ravenna city is the coastal region of this part it uh, reveals the 10 centimeter of the deformation till 2018 to 2022 also in this part of coastal plain of region here some of the major infrastructures reveals the deformation of 3 to 4 cm per year also in the next line descending track also we analyze our uh, information in descending track 95 it reveals the deformation of the 4 cm and the building infrastructure also it reveals the uh, major in in infrastructures like the storage storage houses uh, it reveals the six centimeter of the deformation in descending track. But we want to like more looked into the using the vectoral decomposition technique at the 20 meter special resolution. So we also process that. And uh, in uh, vectoral decomposition technique, we can clearly show which are the infrastructures showing the downward or uh, down trending phenomenon and which are the infrastructure shows the uptrending phenomena. So here is the first results as we can see here is the major infrastructure near the Ravenna, it's a major agriculture farm and uh, it shows the five centimeter of the deformation in the uh, down of down vector. Also here is near the coastal uh, coastal slide, it shows the deformation of the four centimeter. And also we process uh, at the individual building level in whole city and it reveals the information such as like the major buildings uh, near this uh, port this is the major ports of ravenna city as we can see here in the major the major infrastructure ports uh, it reveals the deformation of 4 cm uh, in overall and uh, it 1 cm per year so and also it is the plain same region we can see here may most, most of the buildings reveals the 4 cm deformation also, uh, we also process the linear infrastructure in the Ravenna city, such as the uh, uh, roadways, bridge, tunnels. And uh, as we can see here, it's a major national highway, which like connects to the uh, different uh, like uh, towns like the Bologna and the Pope Lane area. And it connects to the Venice also. So it also like reveals the deformations around the three to four centimeter. Also here we can see is the major state highway. It reveals the deformation of 3.5 centimeter per year. And also like uh, we want to just validate our PS results with the one of the GNSS station is located in the Ravenna city itself. So we collected the data from the Nevada Geodetic Laboratory. And uh, as we can see here the in the Ravenna city point, it shows the deformation of three centimeter per year. And our PS analysis also reveals the same deformation three centimeter per year. So uh, the discussion point the, regarding the PSI technique is a powerful technique with uh, high uh, high resolution of high accuracy and we can identify the areas which are vulnerable in nature and we can uh, see the high and low levels of the deformation train in the particular infrastructure level. Also the investigation because in every infrastructure like behaves differently uh, in terms of the geological setting because geological settings plays a crucial role uh, play a crucial role as Hania mentioned because the geological setting is really important to understand the deformation phenomena because there are so many reasons like anthropogenic uh, phenomena, natural phenomena, deep tectonic phenomena so that we have to understand broadly and if, uh, with the real knowledge of the area to be acquired through the field surveys and maybe involving the stakeholders for the particular area of interest and also for this ground data it helps to understand the interaction between the structural damage and the ground motion. The actual relation also reveals if how buildings damage are caused by the structural weakness or due to the ground motion, due to the anthropogenic activity or maybe the natural activities. Majorly, the most of the ground motions are caused by the exploitation of the groundwater as uh, we uh, we all we already like read the, so many articles about this area of interest and it shows the a combination of the anthropogenic activity and natural phenomena due to the groundwater exploitation and the deep tectonic phenomena. So it's our conclusion is to PSI technique is a vital monitoring technique to enhance the understanding of the structural damage and the ground motion and also the average line of sight velocity observed in our area of interest to 4 mm per year, uh, 4 mm per year to 5 mm per year.
every year and the uh, overall deformation we found out to four to five centimeter and further this data has been analyzed in up down and east west component to understand how broadly to it's uh, how like how much is subsidi subsidized in every year and also we process the linear infrastructure like roadways railways are to be analyzed thoroughly and it shows the deformation of four to five centimeter also we uh, it, as we can see on the map the vulnerable areas we divided the areas by the subsidence and considering the various driving factors, uh, as I mentioned earlier, the anthropogenic uh, phenomenon and natural phenomenon. And so these are the, our references that uh, we used for our study and processes. And I thank you very much for your attention. And at last, uh, I'm like thankful to the IEEE GRSS and React Technical Committee to give us this opportunity and uh, give us the chance to present uh, Thank you very much. Yeah, thank, thanks, thank you a lot for presenting us uh, this very amazing work. And again, congratulations. <laughs> even though I know <laughs> it's not uh, in person, physically would be even better to shake your hands. So thanks a lot. It was very great. And, uh, and also, I wish you all the best for, for the future, right? Uh, I hope you, you stay active in this domain yes, uh, yes. and that you will contribute further on. This would be great. But before we stop now, we have some opportunity for the people which are listening to us to, to pose some questions. I'm not sure if somebody was posing already something in the chat. Um, I'm just checking this now, but I think not. Um, and I don't see something in the A and in Q and A, also not. But my question is, uh, if somebody likes, you can just raise your hand and you can ask a question if you like. Okay, I don't see it really. Okay, but then I have a question. <laughs> so you, I think it, it was really great work and um, it's really interesting to see where all these features are, which are really subsiding, I would say. Do you have a clue why these are these two main particular areas where you have subsidence by house structures? Do you, yes. do you have a reasoning why this happens in these regions? So, uh... Yes, ma'am. Uh, we read uh, so many the regional uh, uh, agencies did uh, uh, in 19th century. They did some work with the uh, the instrumentation and leveling technology, uh, leveling techniques also, and uh, also they did, uh, did with so many uh, studies with the ISA data set from 2000 to 2010, and it shows the major anthropogenic features are due to the water exploitation or groundwater exploitation mm -hmm. and also or the natural phenomenon like the deep tectonic because it's a poor plain area and it's a poor plain it's a, like in italian region it's a uh, it's ma majorly connects to the tectonic movements also the european plates and the majorly the uh, asian plate so because of the deep tectonic phenomenon and the major reason the anthropogenic is the majorly is the groundwater exploitation as far as i know and mm -hmm. also like uh, we can, can we also met about the experts about this study uh, who are actively involved in this study and also uh, we also did one of the study in the bologna region which is near nearby town from this uh, uh, this uh, ravenna region and also it shows the same trend and it's, it, it shows the higher trends than the Ravenna because of the same phenomenon, because of the groundwater okay. exploitation. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay. But is, is there also, do you see also the, the other trend, not only subsidence, but also shrinking back when you have repletion of, of the groundwater, for example, in, in, in days or in months where you have a lot of rain coming? Can you see this too? Uh, the uplift uh, phenomenon, as far as uh, we didn't see, because okay. of the in the city in the city area it shows the majorly is the stable phenomenon but uh, in the, since the, after 2020 it's showing somehow deformation at one uh, centimeter per year or in the city side also but also as far as from the ancient time the 19th century the coastal area is deforming uh, continuously okay okay yeah thanks a lot i see there's now one question in the q and a and this question is, how can this technique be implemented on the hilly terrain? Oh. Uh, so good question. So, so in yeah. hilly terrain, this technique, uh, it, uh, it's a bit complicated because the, the standard development process, it can't help the, in the like, like the GMS. 
we we have to change our approach like the standard development process to the somehow we have to play with the parameters like the as i mentioned we need the high resolution terrain in terms of to process the ps point also we, we have to co-register effectively the stack of the image pair it also plays a crucial role and we have to extract the uh, highest higher amplitude stability index and the spatial coherence in terms of the multi-temporal stack so that's all like it matters for the processing point of view. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's not so easy. That's I agree. But I mean, it's still research and it's great to, to have yeah. some scientists which are working on this problem. That's great. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Yeah. Thanks again uh, um, for you both uh, to presenting, presenting today here. And then I would switch over to Rabia. She will now go to the, to the next winning teams. <laughs> Hi, thank you, Elena, and congratulations to you both for winning this. Let me share my screen real quick. Okay, I hope everyone can hear me clearly, right? Yes, very well. Okay, perfect. So now we are on this, to the second part of this webinar, which is the award ceremony. So now I will present about the Earth at Risk Image Contest 2023. So this year, similar to the EO4 SDG, we had the second edition of this image contest. And we are delighted to have 35 submissions from over 12 countries, which were distributed across the globe. Um, we had most submissions from India. So that's that's good. But we also had uh, submissions from other countries as well. We're happy to see submissions from Nigeria. That's really good representation of the you know youth across the globe. So this occurred in um, the same timeline as EU for SDG. We had submissions till the summer, and then this time we did something differently. Well, last time we also had public choice winner, uh, but this time we had like a poll unit. We used a different platform to display the imagery and this uh, poll unit was embedded in the main GRSS website. So everybody uh, could see, you know, all the image gallery in one place. And we were overwhelmed by receiving um, more than 1500 submissions. And it's important to note here that this contest was, uh, you know, joint uh, React and also IEEE Young Professionals. And we were happy to receive so many votes and so many submissions from you all. Here's just a sneak peek of the amazing imagery that you guys submitted. And this contest is all about showing how Earth is at risk in, you know, from climate change impacts and also how you're, you know, uh, taking it towards the sustainable development goals. And as we say that the picture, you know, is worth a thousand words. And here is the visual representation in which you can see received some animation, some static imagery some time series changes and the applications covered like literally all variety we can say from environmental applications from flood monitoring from hydrology from wildlife from forest fires from tectonic activities mineral mapping and whatnot so thank you so much for sharing your knowledge in such a beautiful visualization of these images and he's just a just a sneak peek of all these, we had many more. And here's a QR code. If you want to see like the full gallery of the images, you, this QR code will take you to the main GRSS website where you can see like all of our beautiful and amazing thought provoking submissions. So without further ado, I know the moment you all are waiting for. Uh, so here, and also a thank you for to the evaluation committee. Thank you, um, Irena, Dr. Carlos and Avik Patacharya for providing, I would say, fair evaluation and unbiased. I, I can assure all of you of that, that your um, submissions were judged like very fairly and without biasness. So here we go. So the third place um, is given to Adedevi Abidun Faith from Federal University of Technology, Cure Nigeria. Congratulations. Here's a like a screenshot of their certificate. So um, their entry was about the land uh, surface temperature using Landsat, but I will not take their spot. I will um, ask them to unmute themselves and you know talk more about briefly 
to tell everybody what their image is about. Okay. I'm, I want to ask, can anybody hear me? Yes, we can hear you. Please go ahead. Okay, yeah. So, yeah, my name is Adi Dewa Bjorn Fates, and I'm, I'm a student at the Federal University of Technology Akure in Futsa, Nigeria. So, actually, I would speak a brief about how I, I got to know about the Earth as Risk Image Context. The, uh, thank you so much for, let me firstly appreciate, thank you so much for, I really appreciate for being selected as one of the winners out of a lot of people that I know applied for this event, for this uh, competition. So, how I got to know, I got to know through a, a friend. She was the winner last year. That, I think mean, that should be a person of a, a, a Guagusu yeah. Precious. She was the overall winner of the Earth at Risk Image Context. So, so she told me she, she told me about the competition, and so I showed interest. And of course, then I was in my year three. I'm currently in my final year at the Federal University of Technology Akure. So I was in my year three, and of course, I, as a student with a background in metrology and climate science, so showcasing climate change, trying to project, okay, these are the, are the points, the way people are being the climate change, and of course, showcasing, doing something, working on a project that is related to the climate change, based on my background. And of course, I've been involved with a lot of climate change activities. I mean, I was selected for, although I didn't go, I was selected for a year before that time, that was 2020, so I was selected for Conference of Youths, that's Climate Conference, at uh, Egypt, that's COP20. Uh, okay, Co Co it happens before COP, Conference of Youth. We have Conference of Parties, that's for where will leaders gather to, you know, to take action on climate change. So I was selected, but I didn't actually go. So, and of course, I've been involved with climate change right from my year two. Yeah, so and I've been involved in that with climate change. So actually, I, I so I met an Egwagusi Precious, the winner. So from there, the idea came of working on land surface temperature. And of course, from the analysis that, that is displayed here, you can see, you can notice aside the fact that you know the temperature is actually increasing, you can also see that in 2022, the high temperature is is is, is, is more like you can see it's more in most locations compared to the 2022. And that's, the, that's to tell you that the climate is really changing in this particular area. And of course, the, the, the global goal is what to, to reduce the, what's called the global warming to about 1.5 degrees Celsius or probably two degrees Celsius. So, and of course, for some areas, talking about the Atlantic or the Arctic region, the temperature is rapidly changing in those areas. So this is really a call for us to, you know, to take action to save our planet. And of course, this same, this same method can also be implemented to know to show the level for how we are taking action so i think that's basically what my project is all about so thank you so much thank you very much thank you so much for putting perspective to this picture by explaining like your background and your interests so at this point um i would like to you know if anybody has any questions they can put it in the chat box but i will um, ask all the winners to present first and then we'll have a q a session later so when you're writing your question, make sure you mention like from which winner or speaker you want to ask this question from, okay? So let's move on to the second place. So second place goes to Fatma Ali from Istanbul Technical University, Turkey. Congratulations, Fatima. Thank you very much. Her, her work was about the earthquake disaster that we all witnessed that happened recently in Turkey. So please, Fatma, the floor is yours. Um, at first, I would like to express my heartfelt thank to IEEE GRSS. We as remote sensing researchers always uh, follow, uh, read your articles and your studies, but being, um, being part of uh, this community, even at least with a um, with a special contest was uh, actually, uh, it means a lot to me. I'm very um, happy to meet you all. Uh, okay, um, you may heard of the big uh, Kahraman Maraş earthquake sequences. Uh, we've experienced a lot of big losses in many ways in Turkey. Um, by that time, I was writing my master thesis in Istanbul Technical University. So my master thesis was about um, dam deciding, damaging, uh, assessing damage assessment after earthquakes. Uh, but I was I was going to use satellite images and deep learning. 
um, after this big earthquake occurred, I thought I had to study that. And maybe this may be one of the um, first must thesis about these studies. Um, to talk about this image as general, uh, it presents a, a holistic overview of earthquake activity and its aftermath in Kahramanmaraş province in Turkey. Um, you can see urban planning, disaster management, uh, data points, and uh, there are layers like damage assessed building footprints um, or the um, disaster management um, layers I've created with deep learning. Um, so I've used Maxar's uh, satellite images to, to enhance its comparison comprehensiveness. These images vividly portray Turkey's landscape and the Kahramanmaraş province, providing a detailed description of terrain, urban centers, and the impact of the earthquake on, on the environment. This map uh, shows an earthquake damage data in general for the only the Kahramanmaraş province and uh, for the Kahramanmaraş province and the city center as a zoom uh, perspective. So you can see the general representation in Turkey as well. Um, also, uh, you can see a QR code here. Um, this, if you've seen that, if you've scanned that, you can see a um, dashboard website I've created. I want to um, add, amplify all the things, all the studies I've created on a map. So I want to show them with a dashboard. Um, this was a project based on my master thesis again. Um, so you can scan that with your phone and web. It can open, uh, you can see them and um, show you the website. So as I said, I've created um, different types of them, um, data types to create these colorful uh, damage assessment maps. Um, so I wanted to create an, uh, in a practical map with uh, like a, um, creating a different perspectives and different layers with a little bit aesthetic as much as I can. Um, so it's um, based on my academic study and this uh, image also is included in my master thesis. Um, that's all I can say. Uh, I want to actually create an uh, awareness for this um, earthquake studies, the, uh, the effects of the earthquakes because we as Turkey, we are an active earthquake zone we have an active earthquake zone, but we need to use remote sensing uh, data sensors. Um, this is extremely helpful for rapid damage assessment. And I want to create an awareness uh, for my um, for my university, for the city I, I, I live in, because we will expecting an earthquake in Marmara region as well. Um, that's all I can say. <laughs> Thank you very much. I'm very happy to meet you all. I congratulate uh, all the winners. And I hope with this passion uh, we have, we can um, create different big perspectives to ourselves. Thank you very much. Thank you so much, Fatma. It was really like a heartbreaking event what happened in Turkey this year. And we really hope that all people affected are, you know, rehabilitated by this time and back to thank you for their life. Question. And thank you for your efforts in bringing like this important aspect of, because it is an active zone for earthquake. And yes. Thank yes. you so much for your work. Thank you. So now moving on to the first place. So the first place goes to Sandeep Kumar from Indian Institute of Technology, Bombay, India. Congratulations, Sandeep. So his work is about wildlife burnt, found located in Hawaii. So Sandeep, I'm gonna pass over the mic to you. Please um, explain briefly like about your work and your aspiration for this. Hello. Are you listening? Yeah, we can hear you. Thank you, Rabia, for giving me the opportunity. Uh, I'm Sandeep Kumar. I'm current, currently doing PhD at Microwave Remote Sensing Lab at IIT Bombay, India. Uh, before proceeding to the presentation, first and foremost, 
I would like to thank the juries for the selecting my map as the winner of the Arthur's Race Image Contest 2023. Uh, this is a map showing the effect of wildfire on Lahaina Town in Hawaii. Uh, before explaining the images, I would like to provide an overview of wildfire and the method used to estimate this. As we know, in recent years, the frequency of wildfires has increased drastically due to global warming and climate change. And for a forest fire to occur, uh, there are mainly three elements are associated with it, which are oxygen, fuel, and heat. Where oxygen helps fuel to burn and is present everywhere in the air, the carbon stored in the forest, which is vegetation itself, acts as fuel. And the increase in global temperature decreases the fuel moisture content and hence reduces the ignition temperature of this vegetation, which helps to catch fire easily. So to map the one area of Lahaina town, we have used central two images of pre and post fire, which are acquired on 8th August 2023 and 13th August 2023. And then we have calculated the normalized burn ratio. So this normalized burn ratio is the normalized difference between the reflectance at near infrared and the band center near generally 2.2 micrometer, which is also called as short wave infrared. It's bugs in the basically multi spectral domain. And these two bands have a specific characteristic for vegetation. Because of this only, we have we used this MBR. Since a healthy vegetation has higher reflectance value in NIR due to the scattering in the internal structure of the leaves and the lower value in the short wave infrared part due to the mainly due to the absorption of energy by leaf water content and some of the absorption by the by other leaf pigments such as lignin, protein content of the leaves, and the uh, cellulose and starch. As NVR uses these two bands, hence the healthy vegetation will always have higher NVR value. As we can see in the first image, in the pre-fire conditions, the green color shows higher NVR value and refers to the regions with high moisture content. So <clears throat> when fire occurs, it reduces the NVR value. Hence, in the second image, we can see this shows the post-fire condition the NVR value has significantly reduced in just five days period, which in earlier shown in green color now becomes in red color, which are becomes very low. So taking the differences in pre and post fire NVR values, it highlights the fire affected region and suppresses the background value. In this way, we can map the burnt regions. The major concern of the first fire is that it can lead to losses of the sources and as well as the lives. As this is a example actually. Uh, this wildfire itself results in loss of hundreds of people in the Hawaii and their shelter homes also. So this is a major concern of the uh, earth that everywhere, like a few years back also, there was a bushfire in Australia. There this uh, Canadian fires. Uh, then there are fires in the uh, California regions also multiple. The, these trends are increasing, these fires trends are increasing and the nearby population has a greater effect on this. So we need to uh, this uh, mitigate this using the remote sensing technology. So thank you from my side. And once again, the congratulations to the, all the winners and uh, thank you the IT police, GRSS React committee to making this image as a winner. Thank you, Sandeep. And yes, you're right that this wildfire problem is not just located, uh, restricted to Hawaii only. Recently, the Canadian wildfires impacted like a lot of states uh, in the US as well. And I've personally witnessed the effects of Canadian fires like thousands of miles away. So it is definitely alarming and we should like, you know, talk more about it and take actions. So thank you so much for uh, this work. And now we move on uh, to our public choice winner. So which all of you chose like through public voting. So the people's choice of the public's choice winner is Adewale Oleami from University of Lagos, Nigeria. Congratulations. And um, I should announce that uh, his 
imagery, this one, it got like around 50% of the votes as compared to the others. So people really liked your work. So I would ask you to, you know, talk more about this. Tell us more. What was your, uh, you know, purpose behind this? What was your inspiration? The floor is yours. All right. Good afternoon, everyone. Can you hear me? Yes, we can hear you. Hello, good afternoon. Okay. Um, first of all, my name is Adewayo. And I'm currently a five-year-old student in this country. The students are learning. So before I discuss about it, I collect and also we cannot sorry, we cannot hear you like quite well. Can you like, Okay. Can you hear me now? Yeah, th this is better. Thank you. Okay. Um once again, my name is Adewali Olay. Mm -hmm. I'm a student of University of Lagos. I'm currently studying Soviet and Informatics and I'm in five hundred level and I so before I discuss about my image, I would like to appreciate the organizer of this competition and also the public for voting for my image. So about my image, um, the image is about um, the flood that occurred in Pakistan in 2022. So um, between, between June to October 2022, a major flood occurred in Pakistan. And um, this led to the this led to the death of thousands of people, and many structures were damaged. And also, um, it's it's it led to several uh, economical losses for the government and the citizens. Also, um, according to multiple reports, um, the flood were caused by heavy rainfall. That means um, the rainfall of the of the area where uh, there were more. Uh, they were more than the average uh, expected rainfall of the country. So uh, it's, it affected the whole country and uh, this, this resulted in flood for the, for the country. So uh, Sindh, you know, which is a region in Pakistan, um, they were severely affected by this, by this flood to Pakistan. So, and uh, according to the province government, they confirmed that the flood event led to over uh, 500 pieces of malaria and another waterborne diseases. So, on this, um, this affected a lot of people in this province. So, with the help of this image, like um, with the help of flood detection image analysis like this, uh, the, 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 the geographical extent of the flooded area can be determined. And also, it can help relevant um, stakeholders to provide relief and support for the um, affected area. So, um, in conclusion, health observation um, is very helpful in protecting our planet from, from many future natural disasters, such as flood earthquake, uh, wildlife, and any other natural disaster. So with the help of remote sensing and earth observation, we can we can prevent our our planets from natural disaster. So thank you very much. And I and I also congratulate all the other winners. Thank you. Thank you, Andewale, for bringing this up. Yeah, flooding is a problem in Pakistan, and unfortunately, we haven't done anything to manage it till yet. <clears throat> so that's the end of, of the winner presentations for Earth at Risk competition, <clears throat> organized jointly by IEEE Young Professionals and IEEE React Committee. So thank you to IEEE React and Young Professionals for giving everyone this opportunity. And hopefully, yes, we will continue ha having these competitions if we keep receiving similar response from all of your side. So it's time like I, it's time to ask like questions from your presenters. I'll stop sharing and I'll now check the chat and Q&A if we have any questions for all of our winners.
I have a question from Subit. Subit, can you unmute and tell like for which presenter it was for? Um, it was for the land surface temperatures uh, image. So I was wondering, since it's land surface temperature and not air temperature, can it also be because of increase in impervious surfaces in cities and, and increase in urbanization that causes uh, these heat anomalies? Your, um... Sorry. Sorry. Yeah, you were you okay. were muted. So, so can, I, can I can I can I get a question again? Sorry. Yeah, I was wondering if there's a, a you know part of the difference between the land surface temperature is because of increase in urbanization as, as well, and which causes heat islands and um, yeah, you know like increase in land surface temperature in parts of the parts of the city. Okay. Sorry. I want to ask, like I'm trying to confirm. If it's one of the reasons, definitely it's one of the reasons, definitely because urbanization would definitely lead to like you no know, cutting down of trees, you no know, for de for development purpose. And yeah. a, a lot of things would so like one is definitely, yeah. I try to confirm whether it's part of it or well, let me can I yeah, yeah, yeah. The question or... yeah, yeah. I just wanted to okay. uh, understand if there was urbanization there and that was one of the causes. Yes, 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 there was an organization there because I think they, most of the schools that are currently there, I mean, universities, they, they came about maybe like about 15 years ago, definitely. And of course, the, the LSC, the last temperature that I did was, I think, about 36 years in Tara. So, so yes. Great, thanks. Okay, perfect. Yeah, so, we have a question for Sandeep. So Sandeep, the question is that you have used optical uh, thermal data for wildfire detection. Do you think a combination with radar data would be useful and would that improve the results? Yeah, might be because uh, these uh, optical data sets and the radar data sets have uh, basically have this uh, complement complementary um, information as uh, this optical will give you insight about the generally biochemical property of the vegetations like chlorophyll content, the protein content, then this um, lip, lip moisture content like that. But uh, if you um, go to the radar data sets, this uh, data set can give you insight about the uh, physical property of the target. Like uh, in case of vegetation, it will give the a structure property, the geometry property, the orientation property, and then the dialectic function as well. So these information are mis complementary to each other. So uh, using the combination of these two data sets, we can give the mis the damage in, in the biochemical uh, biochemical part uh, with the this uh, physical with geometric and physical part of the vegetation as well. Thank you, Sandeep. Fatma, I have a question for you. So I know like, you know, you presented a lot of great work. So you. are you like, you know, partnering with any government agency or anyone like who can use your results and, you know, use that in policy making or, you know, marking the hotspots or seeing like how much funds need to be allocated for the rehabilitation of the, you know, people who are affected or the, you know, rebuilding of the urban areas and all that? Um, if I'm not incorrect, did you ask if I made a collaboration with municipality or like, government? So just, okay. uh, my question is simple, like, you know, um, is there any way your work is utilized mm -hmm. to make like informed decisions? Um, you know, that's a very a beautiful question. A very um, correct way to ask that because at the end, we have to do that, right? You're yeah. very correct to ask that. Um, actually, I work in uh, Istanbul Metropolitan Municipality. Mm -hmm. You asked, like, if you know it. Um, yes, government and authorities should have used remote sensing and disaster management and technology um, if they can manage, um, like, uh, local government, uh, institutional, things, uh, duties, um, after that, uh, with the help of actually universities, um, after that, we can create an like 
earthquake nature uh, country, something like that. Um, actually, recently, um, I have submitted a project uh, which was named um, Creating a Disaster Management um, Strategy uh, by Empowering uh, Local Governments. Um, I'm trying these things uh, personally, but um, I submit and talk about my projects. At the end, they are the ones who will yeah. uh, accept that and do that. I'm actually uh, freely in my free time as a free researcher. I can do that. Um, I'm trying. I always do that because I um, my bachelor's degree is geophysical engineering. So that's why I study earthquakes. Then I move back to remote sensing. Um, and uh, we've seen that in Kahramanmaraş earthquake sequences. That was like the, uh, everyone thought uh, to make damage assessment with remote sensing because it was the most logical one. Um, I'm all, uh, uh, at the end, uh, in a short way to sum up, uh, I try, always do that. Um, I hope one day I can make a big, good collaboration or a big project with local governments. Yeah, we, we thank hope you. so too. Fatma. Yeah, thank, thank you, you so much for your work. I, I thank you. So thank you so much, everyone.